everyone. Welcome to another episode of Excel Tribes and Podcast. My name is Kirkland, and today I have a special guest. Now, sometimes people say three times the charm. I'm going to say two times the charm because the last episode, I had so many technical difficulties that he and I just had to reschedule the podcast. And even today, I was tempted to reschedule, and I said the devil is a lie. I'm going to show up my, with my Kanye through the wire, and I'm going to spit these bars on this podcast, okay? So I want y'all to intro, or welcome Jeff onto the podcast. Um, so for those of you who don't know, Jeff Jenkins is a big and tall content creator. He's a travel blogger. Um, I mean, he is an all-around just dope creative. I mean, he does things that people tell us we shouldn't do, and he does it with such grace. Grace might not even be the right word. I think there might be a better word. Like, you do it with such style and pizzazz. It's like, it's almost like there's no way we can't do that, too, because Mm. you do it in such a good way. So, like, Mm. I want to know, like, tell the people, like, how you got started, like, what was your motivating factor, like, Cause this isn't like a this isn't a job. I think most of us content creators did not grow up being like, yeah, when I grow up, I'm gonna make content for a living. Like, so like, what was your entry into the the the, the space? Well, yeah, man. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Thank y'all for uh, listening to me. I really appreciate this. Um, just even hearing what you just said, man, that that really just made my day. And so I. I, I kindly appreciate those kind words. Um, but yeah, I, like you said, like I, I had no thoughts of doing this uh, even four years ago. Uh, I was actually a high school choir teacher for t- uh, almost almost nine years. So you sing? And I can, but I don't sing anymore. Oh, <laughs> wait till I get over there to Austin. We sing. Come on. I'm Come a singer, on. but I only sing in person. I don't sing. Okay, person. okay, okay. That's cool. <laughs> That's cool with me. But yeah, I did like the whole vocal coaching thing. I did a lot of that. I did that for almost 12 years. Um, but it, it really came down to like I don't, I don't, I don't want to work in a public school, and it was me, like constantly every year being like, oh, I'm going to quit. Like the next year, I'm going to resign. The next year, I'm going to Nine years later, it took for me to actually do it. Yeah, I was still there, and I was like, it's time to stop. Time to make a change. And so I thought I was going to go into something else, and that didn't work out. And so I was like left to like figuring out what was I going to do. And I met my friend. um, The day I met him, he told me what he did. And he was like, I'm an entrepreneur. I just chill at home. And I was like, what you mean? Talk to me. And he's like, <laughs> Talk to me nice. What yeah, you mean? Yeah. You said me at home, bro. So, yeah, he's a real estate agent. Or not a real estate agent. He's a, a investment. Like, he buys real estate investments. And so he had a portfolio. And um, he just, he, he broke it down to me, man. He was so hyped about it. He was just like, bro, like, I was the second dumbest person in my class. I like to graduate from school. He graduated, but he was out of the rankings. He was the, he was second to last. Second to and so last. he was like, well, shoot, if I can do it, you can do it too. And I ain't going to cap. That's what, that was the motivation I needed because I was, I think I was thinking to myself, there were so many different like ways of saying no to, to entrepreneurship. Uh-huh. So it started with me committing to entrepreneurship. I got into selling books or reselling books on Amazon. So Amazon FBA um the fulfillment like center um where i would go to like goodwill i would buy the book for 25 cents and then sell it for like 15 uh, to 400 dollars for one book Excuse like, me, what? yeah like it was it was crazy but it's so hard to do and it takes so much time there's so much uh there is money that is involved just to even get going but i think i got into that because it was I, I recouped the money that I invested in it, right? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't what I wanted to do. It wasn't like fulfilling, like me going out here uh, sourcing books 
and then to go sell them online to a customer I don't see. That really was not like fulfilling my life. And I remember sitting there and I never go down this route when I tell this part of the story. Uh, I know that you, your, uh, your mouth is kind of uh, still healing and things like that. So I, I'll help you out on this one, brother. But yeah, I read this book while I was sitting waiting on books at the Goodwill. And I was like killing this book. I was like, oh man, these chapters are like amazing. Hey, hey, got to the chapter on dreams. And I'm like killing this book. And I was like, man, I've never read a book so fast in my life. And it got to the chapter on dreams. And I closed the book automatically because I knew the way that the, the book was written, that it was going to probably call me out in that book. Oh. Oh, I feel you. I feel you. I'm reading the four agreements and, and I close the book on the fourth agreement because that's the <laughs> one where you have to be impeccable with your words and yeah. Ooh. And so Struggle. and so with that, like I mean, it took me about a week, week and a half, two weeks to pick it back up. And Ooh. when I huh? Yeah, it because I was like, man, nervous to get back into it. Cause I knew for a fact what they was gonna say. And when I did, they said exactly that. Um, that like, bro, you ain't dreaming. You stopped dreaming. What happened to you dreaming? Like all them questions you start asking yourself, like, oh man, like when I was a kid and then you, it's like you let your younger self down for not mm -hmm. going for those dreams and stuff like that. And so, man, but you know what? But about time I got to the chapter, our, I embraced myself. I was ready for it. And when I got to it and I read it, it actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. And it actually was way more motivating and encouraging because what it made me do was write down 109 things that I wanted to do before I die. And he oh, was wow. saying, that, man, just having that list. So oh, it was wow. like, man, going swimming, going great white shark diving with uh, uh, in South Africa was on the thing, like, or seeing penguins in Africa, uh, in South Africa. Um, oh, what else I did? I did a lot. Like, it's crazy. Go to go to South America. Go to Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, like all of these like bucket list things that I wanted to do. I wanted to make this kind of money. I wanted to start doing this. And so he was saying, man, once you start making lists like that and making them like grand in a way, your, your energy, the who, the person that you are, what you commit to God, like it actually starts flowing you into that direction. And so mm -hmm. that's what I started doing. And it made me start asking myself, what do I really want to do? And I went on a mission trip, and when I was on that mission trip, I promise you the story's coming to an end. When I went on this mission trip to go build, well, um, not wells, but to go build gardens in Rwanda back in 2017, while we were there, my friends and I was like, yo, this village that we're helping needs water. And so we came back and started a water well project. None of us was engineers. None of us knew. I didn't, I didn't know oh, how wow. water came out the ground. Like... But I we started, huh? I still don't actually. How does that happen? Oh, it's it's super easy. Like it's there's like pockets of water. Let's just say there's like rocks. They're called aquifers, and so there's like rocks that like hold pockets of water. And if you like dig into it and like you crack through the ro other rocks or rubble, uh, it'll water, start coming. It'll like up. A, a pocket, no, nah, it just be a pocket of water in there. Like, and it could be big pockets of water. And so uh, that's how it is. And it's all, I mean, it's throughout the world. There's some places that don't have it um, in like areas, but still for us to be able to, none of us to be engineers and us to be able to build water wells uh, in Rwanda, like it, that gave me the motivation to be like, yo, we took a, a idea and turned it into something. And while we went back to go build that well, the first well uh, and the only well, because then COVID started, yeah, it was a whole bunch of stuff going on at that time. But that's when we, that's when I asked myself, Jeff, like I kept asking myself, like truly, if money wasn't an option, if what if it could happen do? for you, huh? What would you do, right? Yeah. What would I do? And what I said was, I want to travel the world, help people and get paid to do it. And that's how I got to the, the, the commitment of, like becoming like a travel blogger or like getting into the travel space. Wait, hold on, wait, hold on, wait. Cause now you brought up a whole set of questions that I didn't even think about. So okay. are you telling us that you became a travel blogger in the pandemic then? 
Almost. It was right before. Hola. Wait. 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 Okay. So this must be a testament to you doing what's actually meant for you. Because if you've been doing this for, let's say, three years, mm -hmm. I can't Three years, tell. one or four. I, if you didn't tell me that you used to produce music in, in public school, I would have thought you'd been doing this your whole life. Wow. Like, you're very... Like your natural inclination and your talents, how you how you create content, it's very natural. It's like it's like you were just waiting for somebody to turn on the camera. Wow. Wow. That's what it looks and like from the outside. So I'm 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 very pleased to hear that you've only been doing it for so long. That means this is just the beginning. Yeah, brother. Definitely. I'm glad you just oh. said that. Yeah, and I and I and I truly believe that. Like I, I truly do feel like this is just the beginning in a ways, but then it also shows the testament to the the work that I've been putting in to mm -hmm. being able to do something that I was not able to do before. And YouTube University uh, was definitely key into making me who I am today. Uh, like yeah, almost anything that I needed to learn was on YouTube. Um, and, I'm, and I continue to learn. And then like also books, I read so many books. Uh, that that was something, and I don't read them. I'm gonna be honest, y'all, and I'm a I'm gonna be very transparent with y'all. Uh, I do audio, everything's audio books, and so and I was telling myself like, why well, feel bad about like you only do audio books because I was like, man, and that's what I'm saying. Like they live, why not do it? You know, and like for me, still reading the book. Exactly, exactly, and so and I think to myself, I remember when I was in third grade and my teacher used to read books to us. Like, I love, like, book time. So, like, I get that time to, like, have somebody read a book to me. And so I've learned so much from these books. Uh, literally, a lot of times when I'm like, oh, like, I'm down. Like, oh, man, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this situation. Man, I read a book, and it for some reason, it's always in the – the answer I always need is in the – and so in, in you talk about they say 10, 10 to 20, 30 years worth of experience – like putting it all in an eight hour like audio book like something that you might even have to pay tens of thousands of dollars just to sit in a room with them they're putting it in a book for you and uh for me i get mine from um the library like because our library has free uh, uh ebooks that you can or audio books that you can read you can't just be dropping all this free game on us. So oh, bro, I'm, I'm a drop. Oh, this, that's what today the is about. Library, the library. I'm sorry. I'm trying not to. No, nah, y'all good. Library. Yeah, you had it, library. <laughs> my southern accent, my, my, my Florida accent was about to come by library. So, wait, wait, where are you from? I'm originally from Brooklyn, but I, I some words that I picked up along the way. Now, where are you live at now, though? I live in Atlanta. Oh, you live in Atlanta now? Yeah, yeah, okay. I was like, I'm from Orlando originally. Oh no, 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 not that. Not you know, that's <laughs> basic. That's not that's not Florida. You know that. You know that from Florida. That's once you pass West Palm Beach, like the rest of that, y'all just be another state. Okay, y'all, y'all different than the South. That's true. No, totally. No, totally. <laughs> like, I'm glad you know that. Like, bro, I lived in South Florida before I moved to Austin. And I, I didn't say that until I moved there back in 2010. I was like, bro, this is a whole other uh, state. Like, this ain't even the, yeah. the same state at all. We country. Yeah. Like, I'm real country. Like, that's country up there. And I, I, I see why. It's geographically the South, but it ain't the South. Yeah, totally. Totally. I'm with you. I'm totally with you. And so, so like, free, free books from the library. Okay. Check free books. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm so that. you know, I haven't really yeah. spent any money on books, but I was this year. I'm gonna read twelve books this year. Well, I'm okay. already on my second book, so I got. So I said I'm gonna read one book a month. I already read two books. I said I read two books. So, um, but I was wondering, like these, this my little book habit is about to get expensive. So thank you for giving me and thank the you. audience. Where to get free books from? Yeah, I, I'm learning. Like the more I keep telling people about it, the more people go to their local library and 
Or they just if they already have their library card, they go in and they they like, oh, it's right here. Right? It's an app. You download the app, you put your library card in, and then boom, boom, boom. Here's these books. You might have to be in a line for them so you can get them ahead of time. Get that thing going. So I just I finished the Will book not too long ago. And that was an amazing. Yeah, it's an incredible book. It might be one of my favorite like reads I've ever had in my life. I was gonna that's on my list of books to read this year. It really is. Um along I wanna read Rich Dad, Poor Dad next, but that's on my Ooh. list. Oh yeah, I would recommend and it's for anybody, like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, that one helps you get out of your head and start thinking wealth, right? Like it cause it cause the way he breaks down the scenarios is like coming from a kid. So it almost makes you feel like you're stupid. Like, yeah, you you know what? Why do I do that? You know, like talking about like being in this proverbial rat race, always like living paycheck to paycheck. Like, why am I doing that? Why am I not being my making my own table? And so that's the one thing. And then the other book is The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Uh, that book will get you to dream bigger than you ever dreamt before, but then also give you the, I, I always tell people that's the cheat code to what hap what is happening right now. What you said earlier, Kurt, like that to me is that book alone is the reason why it seems like I am like light years ahead of where I'm at is because of that book right there. The 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. It'll definitely get you going, you know? And then um, the last one I always recommend okay. to people, the last one I always recommend to people is if you're doing content creation or even if you have any business, you need to be able to tell a story. Your your brand has to be able to tell a story. And so what I always tell uh, people to read is a book by Donald Miller called uh, "My uh, Building the Story Brand. Building the Story Brand by Donald Miller. Those three books alone, man, will change the game for anybody, and they can. Um, and I've read that 10X Rule book almost, uh, it's been over seven times. Uh, so I got three more to make it 10. <laughs> oh, you read it over. Bro, I, the, a new concept for me. I'm talking into the microphone, y'all, so y'all can hear that. Like, I've never thought about reading a book over again. That book wow. is so good, and it has so many, like, nuggets in it that it makes me read the book again. And then you'd be like, oh my God, oh my, what am I doing? <laughs> oh my God, I cannot believe it. Bro, but it, it also, I mean, it hits on so much stuff about failure and like how to, how to like, how to uh, overestimate. He says that people fail because they underestimate how long, how hard, how uh, difficult, uh, how much time it'll take for you to get to whatever dream that you're trying to get to. And so people underestimate and don't think about obstacles. But he was like, if you do estimate these obstacles or overestimate these obstacles, when those obstacles do come, you won't get uh, you won't get taken back by it and you'll be able to continue to progress because you already thought about it. And guess what? You mentioned the pandemic. My dude talks about it in the book. He does, It wasn't the pandemic. But he was like, what if we had an economical like shutdown or the world shut down? What do we do then? He said that in that book and told me to think about that. And and oh, wow. I have grown during the pandemic. So I that's why I keep telling people, man, I give that book so much credit because a lot of my friends was like, and they kept saying, and they was like, damn, Jeff, like, how are you still moving? I'm at home watching Netflix, but you like moving and grooving. And like, it was like nothing stopped. And so that to me was the beauty of that. And so definitely read those books, y'all. All righty, three books on the book list. And I guess now I'm gonna have to start a, a book club because- Come on, come on, books, I love it. 10X seems like a book you're gonna have to read over again. Uh, it's probably one of those books that, that throughout the journey of your life, something else is gonna come out at you because that's how i feel about the four agreements like i feel like i'm gonna have to read that book over and over again um especially the being impeccable with your words because that one I'm, I'm really struggling with that one. but um um i feel like wow the, first of all these tips are amazing let's start there appreciate you. um so what i want to know is like 
oh my God. It's like, Jesus, there's so much to pull from. <laughs> how do you, like, how do you manage your day to day? Because if you're listening to audiobooks, um, I noticed on your Instagram you have like a a to do list. There's, so is that like yes. your, is that how you get shit done? Mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm. talk about yeah, that man, I put my. I, and what you're uh, Kurt, referring to is my uh, today's agenda. Uh, I, I mean, there's things that I do every single morning. So when I wake out, of, uh, wake up out of bed, bro, I go straight to my Bible. I read my Bible, do my devotional. Then I do my affirmations and my goals. So it's like I'm reading off the same goals that I have every single day. Like the one until I get to these goals, I'm gonna keep reading these things off. I just te- and these are like mega goals. Like we talking about owning part of the Orlando Magic one day, uh, having $10,521,233.76 in my bank account. That's one of the goals. Going to space, having a TV show. Like these are the big goals that I read off every single day because I believe that every single one of those goals are going to happen. But I got to keep telling myself and reminding myself. So that gives me that motivation and encouragement. Uh, And I do my affirmations. I got to keep telling myself who I am and what I'm going to become. And so I do that. And while I'm doing, after I finish that and I do like my little meditation, I go, Mm -hmm. like it really works because I have to wake up early to make sure I do it. So I will go to the gym. um, And while at the gym or anytime like it's like that, or I'm like working. So I do stuff around my house as well. So it's like, I'm going to like clean up my house or I'm going to do a project around the house. And I try to do that because I read this other book called The 4% Day, like 4%. And it's like waking up an hour earlier than you normally do to get shit done. And so I started doing that, and it's been incredible. And so that's during those times, during that project, like picking a project and working on it or doing some, like, work um, or going to the gym, that's when I actually read my books. And if the book is so good... I'm over here trying to find time during, during any like pause in my day where it's like I got to drive somewhere. I'm going to turn the book on. Um, mm-hmm. So it's like I try to find ways, but it's normally in the morning time. And the reason I do it is because uh, my friend Glow says this. She says that cur- encouragement and motivation is like a shower. You need one every day. Oh, you need it every day. Ooh. And so so people, and, I, and it helped me out to realize, like, yo, I thought I was supposed to be, like, this superhero. Like, I was supposed to be doing this on my own. And then I even found out the people that I look up to, they're being motivated and encouraged every day. They're the only reason they got through this uh, to the journey or to the place that they're at now is because they found ways to be encouraged and motivated daily. Day. They could not do this on their own. If they did it on their own, they would have failed. Or or been sick mentally. It's a lot. Okay. Wow. Okay. Jesus. I don't even know. <laughs> As you're talking, I'm thinking to myself. So I didn't realize you needed to be motivated every day. I, because the thing that I'm struggling with, right, is mm-hmm. working hard when I'm not motivated. Mm. Um, being my word for 2022 is consistency. Yeah, um, I that's so crazy. Work. You say that. Literally, the last meeting I was in, the 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 woman said, "What I'm working on is consistency." Yeah. That's my. <laughs> I want to create even when I feel like shit. Like mm-hmm. I want to cre- I want to be able to to do my best work on my worst day. Mm, come on. Um, and I and I feel like. Part of that is why I said, you know, before we started recording, that I would I'm going to do 52 episodes come hell or high water because yeah. that's my first level of tell, teaching myself to show up when I don't want to show up because yeah. I I want to be I want to be on drugs in my bed right now. <laughs> hey, I with you, brother. I want those pain medications from the dentist and I want to go in my bed, but no, I refuse because like, I love that bro. And I, I, and I said that man, myself these things, cause I don't have discipline. Like when I don't feel like showing up, I just don't show up. And I, and I don't like that. I want to be able to show up regardless because it's 
I mean, I'm a man of my word, so I'm going to show up. If I say I'm going to show up, but if I, if I don't make a commitment to something, I just won't show up. And then, you know, there you have it. Two, two weeks pass by. I haven't done much work. And then, you know, I'm looking at myself two weeks later like, man, you should have did this two weeks ago. But because I, and then I wasn't motivated. So then I didn't get anything done. And now the two weeks bled into something else that needs to get done. So I was really trying to 2022. I'm telling myself, Kirkland, you are going to work whether you feel like it or not. For sure. And so it's very mm. interesting you talk about your goals. Actually, I'm glad you said that. So once this episode's done, I'm going to write down maybe five or six of my large goals and i'm gonna repeat them every day i love that you know what the first person i ever heard say that was sierra um the singer the performer mm-hmm. she said that when i when we were both 18 years old at the same time i remember being i went to fam you uh go rap with oh, oh okay oh okay okay all right rattlers come on come on but yeah, I remember being at the barber shop uh, at our school, and she was on BET, and she said that she put her goals in the back pocket, and she walked had it in her back pocket everywhere she went, every day. She put it in. So I was like, "Dang, I need to do something like that." So the fact that I am reading that, and the fact that she is what she is, okay, now come on, reading these goals to yourself, that mean a lot. You feel me? Come true. Go Gators as well. I saw you do a little Gator show. <laughs> I'm a Gator fan for life. <laughs> but no, so like... I told you, I, I grew up a little bit in Florida. Like, part of my developmental years happened in Florida, so it has a very special place in my heart. Especially I love it. Carroll City has a really special place. Yeah. Wait, when did you graduate? Well, I didn't graduate did from Carroll City. I graduated, um... Yeah. I'm about to lie to you. What year was it? Six or five? Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you didn't graduate from Carroll City. When I tell you, no, Carol I City. From oh, you graduated from Miramar? I lived in Miramar before, oh, uh, course, before I moved here. <laughs> That's so crazy. I lived in County Line Road before. Oh, my God. Oh, God. God. oh, God. You lived on 205. <laughs> Jesus, I know exactly where you live. <laughs> I, know, I know exactly where you live. Yes. <laughs> I graduated from Miramar High. I went to that wow. school. Has wow. so many memories for me. My first job was at KFC by the Pembroke, by the um, by the Pembroke Lakes Mall. Wow. Okay. That was my first job. Yes, <laughs> that place has a really special place in my heart because it was like four really developmental years. I graduated high school. I started college. I had my first job. It has a lot of memories for me. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so what I want to talk about, I don't know if you had this moment yet because you, you named off your, your large dreams. So I don't know if any of your micro dreams are included in what I'm about to say, but the moment for me, the moment for me, when I realized that I always knew you were big, like, like a really great content creator. But I think the moment I realized that the world had seen you the way I've always seen you was when you did the the Bon Voyage um, post with the Washington Post. Yeah, Washington Post and uh, Marriott. Or Washington Post and Marriott Bon Voyage, yeah. When I saw that piece, it felt like people don't understand, but like, when y'all dreams come true, my dreams come true. Because yeah. every time your dream come true, what you say, what you tell the world is that we have arrived. Mm-hmm. What you tell the world is that it's okay for for brands to see us as all the things they see everyone else as. Yeah, for sure. So, first of all, you were snorkeling. Were you snorkeling or or? I was scuba diving. Yeah, scuba diving. <laughs> Talk about the creation of that post. Talk about how that came together. Like, I mean, just talk about that. I, just, bro, I got you, bro. I got you. Bro. I'm glad you brought this up, man. You, you, you already made my day, man. I got a little teary eye just thinking about it. I can tell you this. 
I wanted to do something with Marriott Bonvoy the moment I saw that one of my friends did it, like back in 2018. I did it in 2021. She did it in 2020 or 2018. It might even be 2019. But I was over there like, yo, you can do stuff like that? Like as a travel journal, like a travel influencer. I'm like, bro, people do that? So I'm like, man, I want to do something with them one day. And that's all I said. I never wrote it down, none of that. But when it came across my desk, actually three people brought it to me and I was like, oh, I can't do it. And then the crazy thing is, is that it was supposed to be a comp. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm giving away stuff. Who cares? It was supposed to be a competition. They ain't even looking at it as a competition. They started picking, handpicking, like, nah, we want help to tell his story. And that's what they ended up doing. And so to be honest, it was one of the like best experiences I've ever had uh, doing to date. Uh, one, I was not scuba certified. I had all the plans to get scuba certified. And it was so serendipitous that I was literally getting ready to go get scuba certified that it was like, hey, you want to go do you like we saw you scuba diving, but I wasn't certified. But it was like, would you want to go scuba diving? And I was like, well, shoot, I'm about to go get certified like in a week. Like if, if, if we're doing this later, I can definitely do it. And so within three weeks, I was scuba certified uh, and I got to go and being on that set, like we had a producer, we had a camera crew, like it was beautiful. Like, like, like whenever I have a TV show, like I, I was like, I got like pieces of that in that moment being there. It felt like, it felt like you're part of the big dream that you have for yourself, which is to have a TV show. You could, you can now begin to physically see it. Because oh, and then I started asking all the questions. Life. I started asking all the questions while I was on there. I was talking to the producer lady and I was like, oh, hey, what does a producer do? Talk to me. And she was so excited to explain it to me. She was like, oh, I do this, this, and this. And then I started realizing, I was like, huh, you do that? And that's that's all you do? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, yo, I do that job. And then I started talking to the camera guys, talk to the photographer. I was like, what y'all do? I was like, dang, I do that job too. Like as a content correct director, you are literally all the things, all the jobs. And so I remember, and I'll get onto this later, is that I realized even from that, of like that uh, experience, that oh man, the TV people understand that one person shouldn't be doing all of these jobs, and because we do it on a day basis. And so, but I can tell you this, man, it was the experience itself was like breathtaking. It was being in the water and going to like what I ended up doing, like one of the biggest things that we had to do was that we went to a, a coral reef, like nursery, like nursery as in like flowers, you know how like flowers and where stuff they grow, grow? Where they grow the where reefs. They were growing coral reefs so that they can replant them or re- yes. where, um, What country was that? This was all, uh, this was the, 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 the South. This was Keys. I can't even get it out. Florida Keys. Oh, Florida Keys. Key West. Okay. Yeah, it was in Key Largo. And so we went down there, but to be in that water and to do that, to have them camera people around, have them safety people around, like everything gravitated towards me because they were telling my story, having a, a, a journalist from the Washington Post sit down and have like in-depth conversations. Like if you want to know a lot about my life, go on and read that because she really like went to work on it. And then the whole presentation of it, like this whole, they take a whole like website landing page and it is like this expose of my experience life. Like it is, it is very beautiful. I am so grateful for that experience because I think that was a, a game changing moment for myself as well. And for you to even say that, that really does make me feel like very special. It is a game changing, um, it, it is game changing from the outside. Not, yeah. yeah. To see I'll you in that step. light, because every time someone sees you in that light, like I said, it gives them permission to see other big and tall people in that way, and that's and that's what I feel like. As as long as we continue to live our lives, we'll continue to break barriers just because we exist. And like so, to even see you in that space lets me know we're going in the right direction. We're heading in the right place in in our journey as, you know, big and tall content creators. So one thing I want to know is like, 
what are some of the obstacles that you face uh, being a big and tall content creator? I mean, I, I know what I, but, but, but like you're doing content creation on a scale I haven't touched yet. So inform the people and me um, some of the things we should look out for or maybe divert ourselves in different directions so we can avoid yeah. Lessons learned might be a better way to present that question. Yeah. Um. It, it gets it gets a little tricky on the like like being big and tall because I mean I mean most big and tall dudes will tell you like we we don't feel big and tall at times you know like but then I do feel big but it, it is what it is but I know that there are microaggressions I know that people even if they have good intent think that I can't do something because of my size. Um, mm-hmm. the, luckily, the more I'm in stuff, the more I do stuff, the more um, work ethic wise, they they get to see that now and see that I'm excelling, that they don't say it as much, but I had to advocate for myself. And I actually had to say to people, I started telling people this, and this is definitely a great tip. I was like, hey man, like there's two things uh, I want to like bring up. One is that a lot of big dudes I know are actually very jovial. They we do have like like way more like like personality, like yeah, mm-hmm. like like bubblier personalities. Like we can be the life of the party in a lot of ways too. Um, but I tell people like, hey man, don't. I am very jovial. Like I am, I am a happy go lucky person. Mm-hmm. But I'm a dog. I'm a dog. I outwork anybody. You know. And like people need to know that. Like, and I want y'all to know this. Like, I don't want to be discredited for that. And then I also don't want to be discredited for my size. Mm-hmm. Like, I need those opportunities. And so I actually say that to people. And people have been like, some people be like, oh no, 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 Jeff. Like, nah, I need to say it. And then other people are like, man, I'm glad you said that. You know? And I think okay. saying that and advocating for yourself that actually helps break some of other people's biases because there's okay. so much like fat phobia out there. So where it's like, man, you know what? I'm gonna call a spade a spade. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna just put it out there. Hey man, I'm fat. And that does not, that should not discredit me. I'll tell you the stuff I can't do. I'll tell you the stuff that's uncomfortable to me, but I also need to get outside of my comfort zone. I need to try stuff that I've never tried. And so I would definitely say you definitely got to advocate for yourself uh, as a plus size person. And my thing is, like, even when I started advocating for myself and started saying stuff to myself or for myself, people started adjusting. And like, even even when it was like one of my first campaigns I ever did, they flew me out first class. They didn't fly everybody else out first class, but they flew me out first class. She was like, you know what? I think it would be way more comfortable if Jeff said in first class. And so she was like, I flew you out first class. And I said, oh, snap. I ain't think of that. Like, yeah, that would be more comfortable. And it was. And that was one of my first, that was my first domestic first class experience I ever had. And so. And that's because you advocated for yourself? I advocated for myself. And I showed like the thing because she was like, you know what? The more you talk. Or it's like that for a lot of people or a lot of like the partners and and sponsors I worked with, like they know my page, they go to my page, they look at my stuff and they're they're literally, even when we're doing like the negotiations or the contract stuff, like they bring up like, man, Jeff, you know what you, this piece of content made me think of something. Like I was like, oh man, you know what? I've never thought about size restrictions or weight limits. These are things I just never thought about. And so you're bringing light to it. And so now I have to be innovative. I have to be, think outside of the box and find ways to make sure that I'm being accessible to your needs. And so, cause I do it for others and people do it for others too. And so it, it's, it's not that hard to do. That's a good so, yeah. tip. Yeah, These man, are things great. I think about, but I never say out loud. Oh man, I'm starting to realize the more transparent you can be sometimes, the the more people respond, the more people like be like, huh, because then you start finding out, man, it's, it's, we're just basic humans and we all have some of the same insecurities and fears, but I'm just the one to admit it. Like I like Kanye said, you, you already talking about uh, through the wire. But he also says that uh, all of us are self-conscious. He's just the first to admit it. 
And I think bringing that stuff up, I'm telling you, the most affluent people I know are very introspective and they know how to talk about the 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 flaws and the things that they have going on for themselves and know how to bring that stuff up and be able to to address it. And so and then they work towards it. Uh, so the other thing I would say is don't be afraid to fail. Um, Ooh. Ooh. Like, like, Ooh. like. I always tell, like, I started telling people, man, I chase failure. Wow, you getting too personal. And what I mean by that, <laughs> what, I, what I mean by chasing failure is, like, like I love what somebody says, like, if you're going to fail, fail fast so that you can learn. You can learn quicker. The quicker you, you fail, the quicker you can make. Like, I don't see nothing as failure technically. I look at them as mistakes or lessons. Like, I no, needed this. Like, yeah. I remember I spent... $25,000, or I took out a loan, a small business loan for $25,000. I ended up spending that loan on like my bills for like the like first year of us. Me and my wife quit our jobs at the same time. So um, around the same time, and we both became entrepreneurs. So I put mm -hmm. all that money towards the bill. I wasn't supposed to spend that money on the bills. I was supposed to spend that money on the business. You know, mm -hmm. so I failed because now I'm about to have really bad credit because I can't pay my bills. I can't pay the loan because as it uh, matriculates and it gets bigger, now this loan amount, I can't I can't afford this six hundred dollar payment a month. And so that was a failure. And then I went to my homeboy, that same guy that got me into entrepreneurship. Bruh said, Bruh said, um, Lisa wasn't a million dollars. And I said, huh? Oh. I said, you're right. At least it was a million dollars. So he was like, I bet you won't do that again, would you? And I said, nope. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, things you sometimes aren't really failure. Like, if you look at it in a different perspective, you'd be like, ah. But even so, when it comes down to changing the industry, being able to redefine what big and tall is, like there is some risk that has to be taken and you can't be scared to fail. Because I promise you, even if you're shooting for the stars, you still might land on the moon. And that's a fact. And even that is an accomplishment in itself. So you exactly. didn't actually fail. You learned the lesson. Now you know how to get from, now you're going to learn how to get from the, from earth to the moon. And then that lesson is going to teach you how to get from the moon to the star. I get yes, your sir. point. It all makes sense. It's just, stop. It's too personal. Man, who you telling, man? It, it, it hit us all because I'm nobody afraid. wants to fail. No. That's usually everybody's deepest fear. To fail. But I also fail learned... Fail an embarrassment that comes with it. I learned that lesson, um, I would say maybe about five years ago. Because this is my, by the way, I don't know if many people know, this is my fifth business. Wow. Actually, no, this is my sixth business. My All the okay. five businesses failed. And... That I was, actually, the only reason that happened was because I I was never learning the lessons of failure. Mm. There were so mm. many lessons in those things. Um, I was doing things for money because I wanted because I was I I, I grew up poor, so my my objective of life was always to run a business to make millions of dollars. So yeah. every business I started was with the objective to make millions of dollars. First in my opinion, first reason of failure. I was starting all those businesses for the wrong reasons. I didn't like what I was doing. There was no passion. There was no drive. It didn't get me out of bed every morning. I was just thinking about money. It was my first failure. My second failure was uh, starting business with bad partners who were already bad friends that I turned mm -hmm. into bad partners. Mm -hmm. Not learning how to read the room, read the people that I was with. Just because we're, even if we're good friends, doesn't mean we're good business partners. Not not watching people, how they move and operate in business. Um, not learning that people have different personalities. Some people, you know, they're great at business. They're good friends, but they're not good at business. Learning, not, not learning any of these lessons, just barreling through life. Keep trying to make money, make money, make money. My last business, after it failed, I said, you know what? I'm gonna sit down mm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out what it is I like. 
halfway, maybe a year into the process of sitting down, I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to get a job. I'm going to go back to school, finish college. I only got two semesters to go. I'm going to go to school, finish college. I'm going to go get me a job. Fuck this entrepreneurship. I'm I'm done. Um, <laughs> entrepreneur says that. <laughs> you know that, you know that meme? They yanked me by the coat. Yeah, uh-huh. We're not done with you. And so this business comes to my mind of like, every time I go on the internet, I see big people talking about how they can't find clothes. And I'll just be like, so what do y'all be shopping at? Cause like, I see them everywhere I go. This was in 2015 right. or 2014. I was like, I see them everywhere I go. I don't understand why I'm not seeing them. Okay. Ain't that my problem. I'm just going to move on with my little life. 2015 comes. The whole year and a half later, the, that little bug, you know, that little bug that be in your ear, it, it's ringing. It's ringing louder now. Now it's ringing to the point that I just cannot stop thinking about big and tall fashion. I just cannot. Um, so I tell myself, okay, let me do some research. That's one of the lessons I learned from failure. I've never done research in a business. I literally have an idea. I go to GoDaddy, buy a domain. I'm a, I, 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 I'm a pretty good website builder. So build a website, boom, a business is up in a week. That's usually how every business I ever start goes. This time, I didn't do that. I took six months to do research, studied the market, studied the market cap, figured out why why retail cap from plus size women and plus size men, why there was such a large gap in between them. Learning that men traditionally and almost still to this day don't shop for themselves. That's why the market is so small. Um Number two, we aren't advocating for ourselves because we don't feel comfortable advocating for ourselves. Clothes is, yep. clothes is vanity for most men. It's, yep. it's a vain thing. And men are taught to not be vain. Plus, we're also worried about doing other things like taking care of the house, making sure there's food and light and water. So we're not concerned with what's on our body. So that's why our market cap is so small compared to women. So in doing this research, I was just like, but who are these men, though? So starting to do more research, okay, these are married men in their 40s and 50s. Okay, so where are the men that are in their 20s and 30s that I see at the mall every weekend shopping? So that started to get the wheels turning even more. And I'm like, so after seven months of research, I finally decided, okay, I'm going to jump in feet first, and I'm just going to figure it out. Um, but at least this time... I picked up some of the lessons from failure, which is why I feel like this time my business is a success. Because number one, I first of all, I didn't even know you could make money. This was just out of my pure love for wanting big men to feel confident about themselves in clothes. Like I had a job that I was not happy with, but I had a job that in my mind I was going to work that job until I was 65 and retire. So this was just always going to be like just my project. Not even a project. It was just going to be something I did on the side. It was never like, because I didn't know what, honestly, it's probably because I didn't know about how to make money, really. Yeah. I didn't think there was money in this business. I just thought I was going to share tips, and that was it. And then, again, the Lord kept tapping me. What you doing? What you doing? There's, there's more. There's more. So then I started realizing that, you know, we aren't, the reason that we aren't elevating is because we aren't seeing ourselves in media. Why aren't we seeing ourselves in media? The people who control the access to media don't think we're worthy to be seen on media. Okay, why is that the case? Oh, because you think we don't look good. Great, got it, solved the problem. I went to Best Buy, bought a camera, and I never looked back. So the lesson here is that fail fast. I wish it didn't take me 11 years to fail to figure this out because I've been an entrepreneur since I was 18. I wish it didn't take me this long to fail, but fail fast is, is for real. Because yeah. if I would have failed faster, 
I would have learned these lessons faster, but I was yeah, for sure not learning the lessons. So I, I, that's a really great tip for the audience out there. Fail fast. Mm -hmm. Um. So as before we wrap this thing all up, I mean, you've said you've listen. If you don't say another word on this show, you have <laughs> already given people enough tips that they can turn their life around in twelve months. All right. Come on. But if you could rewind time and add one more tip to your arsenal, what would that be and why? Huh, that's a good question. Um Man, that's a, that's a tough one cuz I don't know how far I'm rewinding the time, but mm -hmm. I, I would just say this. Um, at the end of the day, like, I don't know what made me do it, but I felt like I needed to do it. Back in 2017, after I quit my job that summer, I told myself I was going to start practicing gratitude. Ooh. And, like, literally practicing gratitude. And I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for me practicing gratitude. Uh, it's hard to complain when you're grateful. And so Ooh. it starts making you figure out ways to be grateful for the small things. Because it's like when you're grateful for the small things, when the bigger things come, like it, it really, it really, um, it, it really helps. And so people, people actually, I feel like I get more stuff because I'm grateful. And I tell people I'm grateful in that moment. Like, I don't, I don't like somebody give me something. Oh man, thank you. Oh, you passed this to me. Thank you. Like, I'm grateful. Like, man, I'm, I'm so grateful for these experiences because what it does is when it starts opening up your brain. So, I mm -hmm. mean, like the more gratitude you have for, for life and, and, and the experiences that you do, people want to keep making you feel grateful. Like, I don't know, like people tell me like, man, I just like the fact that like, when I, when I let you to this event, or you're here, you're like, people are like, man, you're a breath of fresh air because like, it looks like you want to be here. Like you're thanking me for being here. Like, let's do another partnership together. Let's do something else. Oh, I got something else I want you to do. Like, so that to me, I feel like continues to make me the person I am. And it keeps me, keeps my head straight because it, it, it also makes me realize that I might not be where I want to be yet, but I'm on the right path and I need to be grateful for where I'm at right now because the stuff and the lessons, the $25,000 that, that went away, like all of that was a lesson and I'm grateful for that lesson. I'm grateful for um, what's to come and I'm grateful now. I'm grateful for my team. I'm grateful to be able to be on this podcast. Like I'm grateful that I can be able to share my knowledge with people and so I'm like, once again, I, I even started this today with being grateful. And it sounds so woo, like it sounds so, uh, like it's, bro, I'm telling you so much power and, and, and gratefulness. And I actually would say one more thing. Uh, and if you don't know this, I know I said it earlier, but I said it very quick. Like the commitment, you have to commit. You have to commit to the struggle. You have to commit. That's the only way you're going to be able to become successful. I feel like when I talk to all these multimillionaires, affluent people, they tell me this, like they, we all have this look we give each other because they respect me. Like people respect me now. Like they're like, man, like I'm telling you, like it's weird how these people, these tech gurus that have multi millions of dollars, like like hundreds of millions of dollars. And it ain't even about the value, but they built these magnificent companies. They give me the same respect that they give others or like, like their peers. They put me in their peer section. And that's because I committed to the work. I committed to the game. And so there, there definitely has to be that commitment to it. And so like, I appreciate y'all again. And thank you so much, Kirk, for having me today. Oh, no problem. Listen, this, this was easy. It wasn't, I mean, this was easy. Listen, I feel like one thing I want to do with this podcast is reward the people I see that show up 
and they show up in such a ferocious way that it's mm. almost undeniable. Mm. And that's how I feel about you, Jeff. Like you, you G, create thanks. from this space that makes me feel like, just like you said, you're grateful. You show up from this place where you, it looks like even if that's the worst day you've ever had in life, you are giving it everything you got. Like, I mean, sometimes your videos are simple, but they're so impactful. Mm. Um, it, it's it's just you do great work, and I wanted to reward you, and I re- want to reward everyone else for the great work they do in helping us as a community move to the next level. Because I like to say that we are kindergartners, and we just graduated, and it's time for us to go to the first grade. Come on, and I, and I see the people that that's making sure first grade is so much better than kindergarten and pre-K. So. I just really wanted to reward all your hard work for that. And um, before you go, Jeff, tell the people if they live in under a rock in Somalia somewhere, where they could find you. Yeah, uh, you can find me at uh, on Instagram and TikTok at Chubby Diaries. Uh, TikTok has the two underscores under it. Or not TikTok, but Instagram has the two underscores under it. But also, man, follow me at uh, on my website. Go check out our website, chubbydiaries.com. We're actually about to revamp, and we're becoming more of a traditional media company. So we'll have everything, all things plus size travel, all things big and tall travel on our page. And so um, articles and uh, flight deals, all that's to come. I don't know when this podcast is coming out, but um, hopefully in May or April, uh, we'll be relaunching the website and it'll be dope. Uh, so yeah, please go check that out. Please support the podcast that I have. Yes, um, your podcast. Your Inspire 2022. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's, if you want to be motivated and encouraged from the people that I have had on, brother, it, it is like it is a great, great podcast. And so I I mean, like look at us, two two podcasters in this thing, killing the game, man. Come on. So I, I please follow me there, y'all. And more to come. All right, perfect. Uh thank you so much everyone for listening. This is another episode of Exo Tribesman Podcast. And until next time, peace. Uh...